Acts 4, 32 and 35. This is shortly after the Holy Spirit has fallen on the first church and God gives us this record of what the church looked like and what the apostles looked like and what the first believers looked like and how they were united and what they did for each other. And I believe when God says, you must repent and go back to the things you first believed, which he says in Revelations, I believe this is what God is pointing to. He says, all the believers were united in heart and mind. And if I'm truly honest, I, I, it's hard to find that today. We're so divided. We're so separated as a body of Christ. And we need to come back to that. God says, come back. Come back to what you first believed. He says, all the believers were united in heart and mind. And they felt what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. And the apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's great blessing was upon them all. There was no needy people among them because those who owned land and houses would sell them and bring the money, give them to the apostles, and they would give them to those in need. And if I'm honest, when I look at this story, I don't see a church, I don't see a body of Christ, Christ in a specific area united in this way. I don't see that. I don't see that at all. I see some things that may have a hint of it or a shadow of it, but I don't see it. I don't see it, and I don't know why, and I ask God, God, why don't we see this? I look through X, and I see two things. I see revival and riots. All the while, during persecution, the body of Christ was spreading, preaching, loving each other, sharing everything they own, giving up everything, and, and God says, that that's your answer. The body of Christ hasn't given up everything like the first church did. It's not a faith problem. It's, it's the, the body of Christ in the first church. They needed miracles. And that's why they saw miracles. We don't think we need miracles. We live on our own strength, trusting in our own ways. All the while, the first church says, yeah, we give up everything. The first church says, if we don't have a miracle, we die. Because when you're in jail or when you're getting persecuted and stoned and chased out of towns, if you don't have God, you die. And so God says, come back to the first things that you first believed. He's talking to the church, the body of Christ. He says, come back. Come back to what you first believed. Come back as you loved me at first. He says, I remember those days when you loved me so violently and you ravished all your love upon me and you trusted in me. Church, I believe that if we come back to, to this, if we believe like a child again, that if we give up everything, no matter where we go, no matter where we go on this earth, God will provide for us. I believe that if we come back and believe like we did at first, like God's bride in the, in the honeymoon stage, if we just come back and believe like we used to, then we'll see God move in a powerful way. We'll see the body of Christ become united as one, in one purpose, in one mind, and there will be no needy people among us because we have given up everything. Church, we have to come back and believe like we first did. We have to believe like we did at first. We have to love like we did at first. Let's just believe again. Let's just believe that God can do what He says He can do and that He is who He says He is. That if we leave everything for Him, that He will give us 100-fold in this life and in the, in the life to come. Let's just believe again that God is sovereign, that He is in control. That the world's circumstance, it isn't in control. That the mighty governments of this world, they're not in control. That America's not in control. No one is in control but God. But God. Not the ones who are going to give us the scholarships. Not the ones who are giving us that job offer. Not the ones who tell us to stay. Not the ones who say, that's not a logical decision. But God. Let's just come back and believe that, you know, God is sovereign that God is real, that God can do all things, that we can do all things through Him, and that everything is possible. Let's just believe this again. Like little children, why have we grown up so much? Have we grown up so much that we have forgotten to believe like little children? You know, God says you have to enter like a little child. He says, no, no, no. He talks to the disciples. The disciples try to rebuke the children, and God says, wait, you're missing it. Let's not miss it like they did. He says, you're missing it. You have to become like them. Why are you rebuking them? You should learn from them. Let's just believe again like little children 
and let's just let's just forget everything. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, 2, he says, while I'm here, I'm just going to forget everything but Jesus Christ. He says, nothing matters. I'm not going to spend my life thinking and considering and contemplating everything I've gained and all the education and information that I have obtained. But you know, I'm just going to think about Jesus and love him and just forget everything else but him because he's the sovereign Lord and I love him and he loves me and I'm his and he's mine and all things can be done through him. Everything else is garbage compared to knowing him. Let's just believe again. You know, God says those who believe will do greater works than he did. And so the only question I have for you today is, do you truly believe? Can you be honest and say, have you really seen miraculous things? Have you really seen the greater works? Because he says all who believe will see these great works. We have to ask ourselves. I know I ask myself every time I read Acts, I have to ask even myself, I say, God, I, I know I've, I've, I've tasted the Holy Spirit, but am I consumed by the Holy Spirit? Because they were. And when I seriously read Acts and I seriously read the scriptures and the word of God, I have to say, God, I know I've tasted, but am I consumed? I, I want to be consumed. And that's what I want you to ask today, because just ask yourself, be honest. Are you consumed with the Holy Ghost? And if you aren't, jump on in. Jump on in. Let God consume you. And let's just believe again. Let's just see this thing happen. Let's go back to the things we first believed.